Okie doke. Um, good morning, everybody. Two things that I want to cover today. Um, one is to introduce you to MobiRise. MobiRise is an application that you can get for free. Um, there's also a more robust version you can pay for. I recommend that you just work with the free version. I've paid for mine just so that I have access to everything. Um, but it's a, 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 an application that allows you to develop a website locally and then upload it to a server a host um, and publish it. And what you're viewing on screen right now is my MobiRise website that I've created. So we'll get to talking about that in a couple minutes. In addition to that, um, everybody knows that the Wix website is due. And for those of you who would like me to review your website, for example, I know that um, hold on here. Uh, Michael, you're here. So I have your website available and we can go over that. And anybody else who wants to will do that as well. Okay. So that's where we're at. And also, Jennifer will go over your um, troubleshoot your, your issue. So <clears throat> Um, Moby Rise, let's start with that. It's a, a, an application that doesn't um, have any tutorials. It's all intuitive and it, it's all drag and drop. It's the direction that web design, I thought it would go years ago. Um, it's not as robust as Wix. It's not as robust. I mean, you can't do everything with it that you can do in Dreamweaver. But for a quick and dirty website, it is perfect. It is excellent. You can put together an entire website in a matter of a couple of hours. Publish it and you're set to go. So let me show you first where to get it for free. So I'm going to pull down a, a this is Michael's, but I'm going to go to it. So you just simply, to get your free copy, go to mobirise.com. That's M-O-B-I-R-I-S-E dot com. Okay. Why is everything going sluggish? I don't know, but it is. Come on. Anytime. There we go. So you can see um, this is Moby Rise. It's a free website builder software. It's for the Mac or PC, so it doesn't matter, you know, which platform you're working on. And you can see right here, download for Windows or download for Mac. And that's it. So you go to MobyRise.com. We will be using another application that they um, um, that they use, that they offer for free, and it's um, a Wow Slider. It's what I've used on my website. Um, I have several WOW sliders that I've used, um, and those two are available for free, or you can purchase them. Um, and they're an excellent way to build um, slideshows for your website. Um, so that's what we will be looking into that later this semester. Okie doke. So everybody knows where to get the software for this. I'm going to go back up here. Okay, and I'm going to go back. Let me go back to Wix for Michael. So this is what I've this is what I've designed for my website. Let me pull this back down. My apologies. Um, so if I click here, okay, this is my website. It's a one-page website. If you want multiple pages, you can do that. But I really found with what I was wanted to present um, on this website, it wasn't necessary. So let me go back here. Let's, there we go. Let's go back. 
let's go back to home, make sure you can see my image. I don't know why you can't. That's not a good sign. Um, let me go to about, and then let's go back up to home and hopefully you can see, there we go. So for whatever reason, it wasn't showing my background image. But you can see I have a nav bar along the top and I can scroll or I can use arrows to drop down to the next section on my page. So this is about us right here by clicking on that. And if I wanna see the portfolio, again, I can scroll or I can click on um, the nav bar, the button. And I can, you know, view a nice big slideshow. It does, it, it builds this automatically. You just, the hardest part is preparing your images for all of this. Okay. And, you know, you know, preparing the content. That's the hardest part for all of this. So this is my website. So again, if you want to look at the portfolio, you just click there. If you want to look at contact us, you go there. If you want to go back home, you go there. So it's just a one page website that slides up and down. So it's up to you, depending on how much content you have, will determine whether a one page website um, works for you or whether you'll need multiple pages. It's entirely up to you. Okay. But all this does is it creates what are called anchors that allows, that allows me to, um, when I click on the button, to scroll to that part of a page. And we will be doing that in one of the last lessons in Dreamweaver. We'll be, be building our own anchors to be able to, and, and assigning ID tags or ID, IDs to them, not tags, but IDs to, the, to certain, to specific areas of a page so that you can um, link to that specific element on a page. Because normally when you click on a page, it just goes to the very top. <clears throat> okay, so if I go back here, I go back home and we can see that, okay? So that's what we're gonna be working on. So um, again, to get you started here, um, what you want to do, and so is click over here, see the little, I can close that little button, but over on the left-hand corner, the little hamburger symbol. So it has pages and it has sites because I have multiple sites that are available that I have created from here. I have one for my son. I have one for my nephew. I have a couple that I built for myself. Okay. And here's one that I built for fall um, 2020. And then I, if I clicked here, this goes to my account. And the account really is my, um, the email account that I supplied to them, okay? So here is where I would go to create app settings, okay? So again, all of this is intuitive, you know, show pages and site names, show all views, show redos. If you want dark mode, you can select that. I kind of prefer the light one, if you want full screen canvas, you can select that. Um, show all block buttons, you know, it just gives you the preferences for this particular program. That's what that does, okay? Then in addition to that, if you want to reset your password or log out, you can do that. I never log out, I never reset my password. If you want to look at other available extensions that they have, um, typically cost, and you can see that the entire, up in the upper left-hand corner, the entire Moby Rise kit is $150, and that enables you to access just about everything on this page. Um, and that really pays to do that if you plan on using this um, extensively, um, rather than pay $49 for a single um, feature that they, that they provide or a single um, template. And they have templates for all sorts of things. You know, if it could be if you want to develop a website for a plumber or for a lawyer or for whatever you have, if you're a teacher in a classroom, you can do all of those things. And they have built in templates ready to go for those. Okay. So that's what that does. Those are their extensions. 
And as I said, my recommendation is rather than buy one extension, you just spend the hundred and fifty dollars and um, um, have access to almost all of them. So this is the one you're looking at right now for the website we were just looking at. It's my personal website. It's one of them anyway. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how this works, how to create a brand new one. So I'm going to go to sites. I click there and I'm going to create a brand new site. And I actually have already, um, I'm going to just click there. And it's going to ask me, you know, which template do I want to use? And you can see that there's a number of them that I have available. There are for portfolios, there are for restaurants, for stores, for lawyers, um, ad agencies, all sorts of stuff. You can click here for more themes. I'm just going to select the default one, Moby Rise 5. So I'll click that. And I should probably rename it. Okay. So you can see it's a blank page, but if I come back up here, okay, um, let's click on here. I have, I think I have Mobilize 5.2 already installed. I hope I do. So back, there we go. That's popping up. That's what I wanted. That wasn't available a moment ago. So I'm going to go to sites. And this is the new one that I just created. So I'm going to rename it. And you notice that I have these buttons up here if I want to clone the site, if I want to edit the site styles from here that you know generally uh, uh, apply to the entire website. If I want to go to the site settings, and that's where I want to go because I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to name it instead, I'm going to name it um, <coughs> Art196 spring 2021. Okay. And this is also where you can export the site you can look at the site's history. If you want to add a favicon, your own favicon, otherwise it inserts the MobiRise favicon by default. So you may want to get rid of that or create your own. But there is, you know, you just have to hunt and peck around to find some of these things. So here's the, the blank page. This is where we get started. So let me close the settings. Well, I didn't want that. There we go. Okay. So um, you'll notice at the very top, okay, it has, it's, this is my homepage. This is for Art 196, spring 2021. So it tells me what website I'm working on. It also, gives us four buttons to click so that we can see what our website's going to look like on a large screen, on a horizontal tablet, on a vertical tablet, and on a smartphone. Very nice. So this is set up to work um, responsively. No, it, not respond. It's a responsive website so that it adapts to each screen size much the same way that we're developing our website in Dreamweaver. Okay, now on Wix, you don't have that choice. It's either big or small. There's nothing in between. So that's kind of the price you pay for free. Up in the right-hand corner, you can preview what you've done in a browser. Um, you could, because I haven't done anything, I don't have a back button or a save button. And I can publish it from here too. I can publish it from over here or here. Now I haven't built anything yet, but let's get started with the basic settings and then we'll go from there. So that's what we do down here. You'll notice that there's a little, let me move my image over here. We have a little paintbrush here. So these are the basic settings <clears throat> for your website. This is the primary color, blue. If I would rather have it red, I can choose that. For the fonts, do you want Jost or do you want another one? Um, maybe um, I can switch from here and I can change from that. And let's look at some more fonts. And instead of that, I want, um, I want Source Sans Pro. I'm going to go ahead and add that as my font. 
And I'm gonna do the same for all of these, for Title II, for Title III, title, the text and the menu. I, I like um, Source Sans Pro. So again, I have to, now that I've added that font, I can change that for each of these. And each one of the titles can be a different font. I don't recommend that. I recommend that you simplify your website and use one, maybe two different fonts. <clears throat> and that's it. Um, you know, do you want rounded buttons? Do you want ghost buttons, or, you know, around the borders? Do you want to underline links? Um, do you want to animate on scroll? Do you want to scroll to top button? Um, you know, you have all of these options that are from here. I'm going to leave it alone for right now. In the coming weeks, we'll go ahead and we'll add some things or test them out. So now I can close that window. And now I'm ready to add elements. And it's pretty much the same way that we've been building our website in Dreamweaver. Think about it this way. At the very top of your, um, your page is the, the navigation. That's where you're gonna add a nav bar and you're gonna add a header. Then depending on how you wanna lay out your, your, um, your page, you're generally gonna add a, a large image for a splash element. So let's click here, see what we have. And these are all the different options that we have here. So here are some headers. At the top here are some menus. So you'll notice that we don't have a lot of selections, but if you want one, for example, with a, um, um, oh shoot, what are they called? Um, I just said it a moment ago. Um, I cannot think. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Let me go back and close that. And let's go to the account. Let's go to the application settings. No, what am I doing? Um, let's go back up to sites. And let's look at this one that I just created. And let's go to the site settings. Yeah, Favicon. I'm sorry, I couldn't just mind drawing a blank at the moment. So we have options here. Do you want a Favicon or not? And you can always turn it off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. <clears throat> okay. And you'll notice over to the left, it's going to give me a rough layout of what I'm doing. So there I've just added a, a a nav bar. If I want um, a full screen intro or for this one, I mean, they give you some options here. The one that I chose was the Moby Rise Builder. So I'm just, I'll select that. So I'm just dragging and dropping and that's it. Now I can scroll down and there's a whole bunch of them to choose from. Okay. Maybe you want some feature articles with some photographs, or maybe you just want um, you know, services that you provide or any number of things, maybe special offers if you're selling something. Um, they have all of these, you know, drag and drop main features that are here. Okay. Now I have added some elements to mine from a previous version. But let's say, for example, I just want to add Uh, I'm just working on the fly here. So let's just take this one here. So I'm going to add that. And you can always get rid of them later. You don't have to, you know, keep them. We can scroll down now and we can look at some other elements. Okay. So now we have images and videos. So that will be our next option. I can come down here <coughs> and I can select um, galleries with pop-up sliders. So this might be the one that I want because I want to create a gallery for myself. Okay, I can scroll down again. I have another option. Here's that wow slider that I was talking about. Here's one with a full screen slideshow up here. So do you want previews with little thumbnails and then it pops up to a large one or do you want to start with a large one? It's up to you. Um, I encourage you to explore. 
So now I can go ahead and I can add an article with a solid background, or I can add um, an article element here if I want after that, after my slideshow, or if I want to change the order of it. Um, let me go back. Um, let's go back here and scroll down. So let's say for these features, I want to get rid of that or I want to move it. Okay. So maybe I want this article, I want to go ahead and I want to drag this block. So now I can go ahead and I can take that and I can drag it up like so. So maybe I want that before my gallery. Let's see why it's not working so nicely for me here. Let's try again. Let's move it up. Um, let me go back to adding an element. So let's do it this way instead. So let me take this one and let's um, move it to above. So I can click here. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me um, continue with this for a moment. So if I want, I can add a contacts page here or a contacts element. I can add um, footers. I can add maps. So let's go ahead and add this one down here. So here's another element we have at the end. Okay. And you can see here's some that I've added from before, some old footers and some old slideshows and stuff that I, that I use frequently. So let me go ahead and close this. Um, let me see if I can't move some of these elements from here. If not, again, then I want to <clears throat> scroll down and let's see, save to user blocks. Nope, I just want to drag the block. So I want to try to drag this one up. So I'm going to select that and see if I can't move it. There we go, now it's selected. Now I can move it, I should be able to move it up. There we go. So now it takes me to here. So maybe I want it um, above the slideshow. Maybe I want it above features. You know, just move it into that location. So now I've moved it. So you can slide them up and down and that's it. Now all you do is you add content. So how does Moby Rise works? And now what I can do is I can write in here and I can highlight the text and I can say about Kirk Miller Art. And you'll notice that I have options for the text, the font. I have options for the color. I have options, options whether I want it to align left, center or right. I can come back in here and click and I can highlight the text and copy paste. That's all I have to do. If I want to change the um, and edit the, the features of each of these blocks that have been added, when you click on the block, you click on this little gear and it gives you the options here. Do you want it to be full width and, you know, see what it looks like? It's not a bad idea or smaller. Do I want to increase the padding to the top or the bottom? That's what I'm doing here. If I slide this like so, see how I can change the padding? So it's all very intuitive. And again, sometimes you have to struggle to figure it out. Do I want the title or not? Notice how the title goes away or it appears. Again, do I want to adjust the width of this? Like so. Do I want the line color over here to the left? Do I want it to be in that default blue? Do I want the background color to be white or do I want to use another color? So once you've decided, and if you want to stick with the defaults, then that's what you do. Then you come back and you're done. Now you go to the next one. And again, it's easiest to start with their default images, but you want to go in and you want to either add or edit your own. So again, if I click on the little gear and I scroll down, you can see that I can go ahead and I have, if I want a background image instead of a color, I can use that. Again, I have all of these elements that I can adjust, auto size, spacing, title, so on and so forth. Okay, so I can close that. And now what I can do is I can either add items or I can click on it. 
And notice that I have, this is their default image. Now what I want to do is I want to bring my own image in. So if I have a site library, these are the, the library items that exist. They're all the ones that they have provided. Once you begin adding your own elements, you can um, incorporate those into your website. And it's quite simple because now maybe I just want to browse on the computer. So now I can drag and drop images or I can click here and I can browse on my computer and I can find an image. So let me go ahead and let's pick one. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one here and I'll go ahead and add it. Once it's been added, I can go ahead in here and I can crop it. So maybe I want it when it is displayed full screen. You can also select specific um, proportions or aspect ratios from here. Another thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add an alt tag. So if I click here, I'll just say um, <clears throat> image of my virtual gallery. And what this does is it will um, provide for people who have, who are sight impaired, seeing impaired, um, information for them when the reader that reads the page to them uh, appears. So notice that it automatically shrinks it fit. And I'll do the same for this one. If you don't want this one or you want to add an image, then if I want to add an item, I can do that. Again, no coding. And again, you have, if you want to eliminate the buttons, you can. So again, if I'll select this area, you know, maybe I don't want to learn more about this. This will take me to another location, but maybe I don't need that. I can click here and I can turn off the buttons so that I don't need them. If I want to change the properties of the buttons, I can change those. So it, it's all very intuitive and it all works pretty nicely. Same with the gallery. Let's go ahead and um, select this unit here. And I'm gonna check, you know, check in here and when we scroll down here. Um, there's the pop-up slider. You know, do I want the title to appear or not? Do I want the subtitle to appear? You can always turn it off, turn it back on. Do you want full width? You know, do you want to change the padding? Right now it's set to four columns. Do you want more? Do you want fewer? It's up to you. Do you want a color background? Do you want an image background? Do you want a video background? And again, you click on the little button to change the color. To change the image itself, you just simply click on the image and you browse on your computer. And before you know it, when you go to the site library, you can see that I have added images to my site. And I can choose from them. So the, the preparation is probably the hardest part to get all of the information that you need to just simply copy and paste once you have <coughs> built your gallery. Um, or your, your, your website, okay? That's all there is to it. And then it automatically saves. You'll notice that I can undo, you know, the previous, pro, um, to the previous save version. I can preview this in a browser by just clicking on it and it will open to my default browser and that's it. And I can publish. Now, when you publish, and we'll talk about this on another day, you can publish, and this is, you know, you would have to purchase this through MobiRise. You can use them as your um, host. Um, <clears throat> if you know the FTP of where you want to put this, you can put this here. My recommendation, though, is that we publish this to a local folder on our computer, and that will be your root folder. And then once you have done that, then we can open that in Dreamweaver and we can use Dreamweaver to publish it. And you'll be using infinityfree.net um, to do that. Okay, so we'll cover that on another day. Okay.
and then we'll be able to publish it. Any questions so far? It's, it's pretty cool. I think it works pretty well for me. Um, just, you know, where I place, um, you know, projects that I'm currently working on, or maybe they're not fully, uh, you know, fleshed out. <clears throat> and I want, um, you know, sometimes I'll want uh, gallery directors or I'll want people who are uh, um, curators, you know, that are curating projects to look at my work. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll have them look at these that <clears throat> aren't a part of my actual or my the website that I send all of you guys to the Kmart 66. Okay. But very easy to build, very easy to build. Okay. So hopefully this will get you started with this. So now, um, unless there are any questions from any of you, any questions? about Moby Rise. Again, it will be the next for, for the next website, the content will be pretty much the same. You should, you know, have a splash image splash page. You should have a little bit about yourself. If you want to create a resume, you can, if you, you know, have one. Um, a slideshow, you know, maybe uh, in the past, I've had students who rescue pets, you know, dogs, and their website was dedicated to that. And that worked out pretty well for them. You know, other people, you know, maybe their family is, you know, their, their husband or their spouse has been a plumber or something that created a website for them. So it doesn't have to be one, you know, for yourself. It can be for somebody else. Okay. So what we want to do now, and let's see if, um, is let's go over some of the websites that we have here. So let's look at, um, I want to look at participants here. So let's look at Michael's if he doesn't mind. Michael, do you mind if I um, re continue recording this or do you want me to stop recording? You don't mind? Okay, well, we'll continue. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this down. So this is Michael Gonzalez's um, website that he did in Wix. And I find it to be very nice. It's simple, straightforward. Um, I'm a great believer in simplicity when it comes to building websites. Nothing too complex. Um, remember that you are uh, you are going for eyeballs. You want people to look at your website. And if it's too complicated, too um, difficult to maneuver through, um, you're going to lose them really quickly. Have a nice um, logo here for Michael. So that's a nice way to start. And that, you know, if he, if later he chooses to create additional pages, then I would, you know, consistently use this from page to page. He can add to his, um, navigation if he wants. Okay. <clears throat> and similar to what I've done, he has uh, a nice big splash image that he did for my 3D modeling class, you know, with his name. You want to learn more. Okay. Takes us to um, his about me page, short to the point. Okay. Clean, strong images. We want to go to the portfolio. We can click on that link. It takes us there. And again, it will take us to the slideshow that we can, you know, go through. Now, I won't. I won't say that this is a criticism, but this is what I strongly recommend that you do, Michael. Is that you add titles for each of these? And I know on one of them you have something. Let's see. I think it was this one. Notice that you have, this is um, Art 186, Spring 2018. Yeah, so if you add titles to these, if you go back in and, and add titles to each of these, that would be great. 
Um, the more information that you can provide for the end user, um, the better off you'll be. That's, that's the only thing that I can think of. Typically, we, when you're um, applying to shows or submitting work um, for galleries or for uh, um, maybe a publication, Art directors like to know a little bit about it. What, what was this done for? This was done for my Adobe Illustrator class, or this was done for my 3D modeling class. And you know, um, when it was done and the approximate size and that sort of thing, maybe what application was used to build it. So there might be a string of things, a few things that you would want to list. Because you don't have a whole lot you know, it, it doesn't take much time at the moment, but later on when you build a, a, a huge um, portfolio of items, it gets a bit much to have to go through and change all of those. But for right now, it shouldn't be too bad. Go back, it functions, it works really nicely. Um, there's a good, um, I think, sampling of what you can do and it's all clean um, <clears throat> i think the the bottom line is the rule is for um portfolios is that um and i think that still holds true but what was told to me when i was a student many 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 years ago um when in doubt leave it out it's the ideal size for a portfolio is between 15 and 20 pieces um, it's nice to have a minimum of maybe six to 10. <clears throat> and you can gradually add to and edit and modify to your heart's content. Okie doke. Any questions, Michael? Any questions from anybody else? If you need to or want to speak, I can allow you to talk. I just don't want everybody talking on top of one another. That's all. No, you're good. Okay. Well, then let's go back. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back and let's see if there's anybody else. So um, is there anybody else here? So that want that has turned theirs in that would like um, some feedback. Anybody want to go next? So this was Jennifer. Um, you're here. You want to talk about yours or would you rather not? Yeah, okay. So let's go back. Um, um, so that's Christina's, right? Or no, down here. Let me click on the link. Is it here or that was for something else? Oh, okay. So that that was a question that you had, but that's up here. No, that's here we go. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Okay. Again, simple to the point, nice little slideshow that doesn't go too quickly. The only thing that I would do a little differently, um, since you already have a, a logo that is really beautiful, you know, the JE, I really like that. I would spell out your name here instead of just JE, I would put Jennifer Espinoza and put it all on one line, Jennifer Espinoza Arts. That would be my recommendation. And now you have, um, uh, similar to what we had done now, when we hover over each of these, notice how you have put a title in there. You can always add more information, but when we hover on top, that's pretty nice. Maybe, you know, the class that it was done for, size, things like that, it won't hurt. But this gives us a sampling of your work. And then when we click on traditional, it takes us to a portfolio of, you know, your traditional images. 
all very nice. And again, with a little title, that would be helpful. And if you, you know, click on any one of them, again, it takes us to a larger image. Nice. And it does have the title here, Geisha. So if you could add a little bit more information, ideal. Would be, you know, that would be um, perfect. So that was for that one. That was, and then we have digital. Again, very nice, nice images. Again, um, what I would also recommend doing too, it, it looks pretty good. Um, if you want your items to follow a nice neat grid, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, if, that, if that's something that you would like is that I would crop them in Photoshop and make sure that they're all the same size um, so that when you look at them in the thumbnail, um, they don't, you know, fluctuate at all. Then you have a nice little image of, you know, and, um, you know, passage about yourself and then the contact information. Perfect. Yeah. So just those changes. Um, I'm, for myself, I like having images that are pretty much the same format, the same size, um, just so that there isn't a, a fluctuation of large to small. Um, I try to put all of my vertical images together and all my horizontal images together, things like that. Okay. And then make sure that I have titles. Yeah, it just, uh, consistency on the web, I, I like. Little things that you might do is, is open up a little bit of space where it's, you have your footer down here. So there's a little bit more padding or margins, little things, it's fine up, up here. The space that's there, it's a little bit too tight down here. So there are little things that you should probably tinker with and then you're good, that's it. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Jennifer, you want to talk? No? No? Okay. So we have um, Michael and Jennifer. So let's close this and let's go back. Okay, Andy. So her, hold on here. Let me find yours here. Did you already turn yours in or no? Or do you want me to share the screen with you? You turned it in. Do you see it here on the screen? Um, wait a minute, Andy, let me see real quick. Let me pause the recording for a second. Recording. Okie doke. So here's your slideshow and here's your page, Andy. The header is bold. Um, that's nice. If it's possible to enlarge the slideshow, I would do that, okay? Um, right now, the header sort of dominates the images, and I think the slideshow, it would be better if it was the dominant feature on the page. So if you could enlarge those a little bit, that would be ideal. If we go to your About page, let's do that. There you're good. Consistency. <clears throat> then you have a little bit about yourself. That's good. And then contact. <clears throat> That's good. Let's go back home. So the only other thing that I recommend too, if you choose to keep everything the same, the only one, the one thing that I would want you to change is the same up here where you, the, the word illustrator butts up against um, the header that you need 
to add margins or you need to add padding, one of the two, so that there's a, a wider gap. Notice all the, the, the huge gap that you have at the bottom, not a problem. I like a lot of negative space so that my eyes can float and move around um, images and text. It gives me a place, you know, uh, to look. Otherwise, it, it, it just is a little bit too tight. And that would be true if we go, let's go to the about page for a second. See how tight your image is to the header? You need more space. You need at least the amount of space that you have between the image and about me up here. Okay, so you need to open that up. And that's true for this, the little um, paper airplane here. It's a little too tight. Open that up a little bit so there's more space. That, that's a must. If you choose not to increase the size of your images, that's up to you. Um, but th that would be a must. Go ahead and, and increase the padding or the margins. And you should be able to just click on those elements and drag them down inside Wix. OK. Everything else works just fine. Any questions, comments? No, you send, did you turn yours in? Do you want me to go, want to go next? Um, here we go. Here's your Art 196 website address. So let's look at that one. This is for infinity free though. So this would be, hold on. Okay, so this is different. This is the, the lessons. So I should have given you um, full credit for this. All right. And that when I, one of the things that I look at is that when I resize the page, it shrinks down. Now this may be because I thought this was for your Wix website. Notice that when this goes down. Okay, there we go. That works. But when this goes all the way down, yeah, that works. There we go. Okay. So everything is sized properly. Yeah. So for those of you um, where it doesn't work properly, where it doesn't shrink down to two columns and it doesn't shrink down um, properly for a small phone, then you got some points docked off. If everything works like this, then um, you get full credit. So I'll make sure that you get full credit for that. Um, you said, did you turn in your Wix website? Because this is this is for the this is for the lessons. Um, Jasmine, do you want to go? Perez? Yes, no. You did yours wrong. Then let's see what you did and we can fix it. Okay, a mindfulness blog. No, that's okay. So you chose to go with the hamburger symbol as opposed to Oh, you didn't put any of your personal work. Um, do you have personal work to show? Okay, well then go ahead and add that. Just go back in and substitute it. And if I click on here, let's see what I have. Does this take there? There we go. So if I go to your blog. Okay. Yeah, if you have, I mean, if you don't want to show images of yourself, um, just if these are the images that they provide, um, I don't know. I like st staying away from generic images. 
Um, not that they're not nice. There you go, there's one for you. Um, probably one of the things that I would do too, where you have the word self-preservation in your header, I would make that larger. I would make that the largest element on your page, the largest amount of text. And then for the, the, the titles of each of the other pages, like let's get in touch, let's meet. Yeah, you have them all the same size, so that's fine. And then here's your blog. Yeah, all posts, there you go. So th those are a little bit smaller, they're the same size. So I would go ahead and where you have self-preservation, a mindfulness blog slash portfolio, my recommendation would be to enlarge self-preservation as well as maybe a mindfulness blog and portfolio a little bit. And I would probably center it so that from page to page it reads consistently. And then I would, when you can, substitute and use your own images instead of the, um, the ones that they make available to you, just so it personalizes it. It's not that I have an issue with it per se. I just think it, it's kind of nice that when people personalize their website and you get a little bit of um, better feeling about themselves, a little bit more insight. Rather than, you know, because the images that they provide are beautiful, you know, but um, they're not, they're kind of impersonal. That's all. So those would be the things that I would change. The colors that you've chosen, since you want to deal with mindfulness um, and that sort of thing, are, are soft and calming. And that's good. That's fine. If you prefer to go with a little hamburger instead of having individual links, that's fine. It will look the same on your phone as it does on a large screen. It's up to you. Okay. Um, oh, you used Unsplash for the images? Okay. So yeah, when you can use images of, that are your own, and when you can't, then go ahead and make, try to make sure that they're copyright um, free or open source, you know, that are, so you don't get dinged by anybody if they go to your website and say, you're infringing on my copyrights. Okay. Does that hit everybody here? I think I got everybody. Am I missing anybody? Do you have any, uh, before we go today then, do you have any questions about Moby Rise? Do you have any questions about your website? Um, um, make some changes and if you want to resubmit them, you can and probably this weekend I will grade the websites. Um, for the lessons, I look at those really quick and give you full credit if it works and ding a few points if there's issues with it. And then if you have issues with it that you want to fix, for example, um, Jennifer, you wanted to, Espinoza, you, you want to work on yours, we can do that. We can end our class now. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Oh, it finally worked? Okay, good. Excellent. Yeah, sometimes it, it does, doesn't. In the past, we've had issues when we've um, used the, these services um, for um, online hosts at school, um, when we've been in the classroom, because um, IT, what it does is it puts up firewalls and um, that has presented a problems also sometimes because these hosting services would view our classroom as a single site, a single location. They think they're being hit by bots. So there was there were problems there, but if you're doing this from home, it should work pretty well. But still, sometimes there's issues. Okay, so I'm gonna say goodbye. Um, and let, if there aren't any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording. And then as you guys leave, I will 
log out and see everybody Thursday. Thursday, we will continue with Moby Rise, and we will also begin working on lesson eight. Okay, so again, we're going to have a collection of lessons that you'll be doing all the way through 11, maybe 12. And then when we finish lesson 11 or 12, then you will publish that lesson and you'll get credit again for all the lessons from eight through 11 or 12. Okay. Okie doke. That's it. I'm going to pause and say goodbye.